I have the pleasure of being joined by Rochelle Lawyer. Rochelle is the Vice President of Integrated Security Solutions at Allied Universal. Rochelle, great to see you. Thanks for making time to catch up with me. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk today. Indeed. So for our audience, we're going to have a quick conversation about the AS, ASIS International 2023 Global Security Exchange, uh, otherwise known as GSX, and their event this year. And we're going to look at some of the highlights of this year's event and, and particular reasons for folk to register and attend, why we want them to come along and what they can expect from it. So um, firstly, I, I wonder if you could just maybe give us a very brief outline of kind of your role, your remit, and maybe just introduce us to Allied Universal. Sure. So um, I have been at Allied Universal for a couple of years now, and we are basically a full service security company. We used to be known primarily for security professionals, but uh, now I'm in a really exciting position of helping uh, parts of our company that used to focus mainly on security professionals bring new interesting technology, uh, policy, procedure, basically everything you can think of that is security uh, to our customers to make their programs more robust, more efficient, and as my title might suggest, more integrated. Fantastic. Now, I'm excited that you're mm -hmm. speaking on a couple of things, I believe, uh, this year's uh, 2023 GSX event, uh, which is being held at the, uh, I believe it's the uh, K. Bailey Hutchison Convention Center in Dallas in Texas. It's being held on September the 11th through to the 13th. I think there's a couple of topics you're talking on. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're talking uh, on, a, I think, a half-day, a full-day session on the topic of successfully implementing an uh, enterprise security risk management or ESRM approach into your organization. And you're also uh, in a, a, a bit of the panel, is it, um, talking about uh, a retrospect, effectively, the last decade of ESRM and the history of it. Give us a little taste of kind of what we can expect from that for folk who register and attend without giving away too much. Sure. So the, the first session is just about an entire day of it's a deep dive into how to implement enterprise security risk management. I promise I'll only call it ESRM from here on out um, <laughs> in your organization. So we've been talking about ESRM at ASIS at GSX for, as the other session says, a decade now. And we've learned a lot of valuable lessons as we've implemented programs, as we've built things out. And we have found that people are ready to break things down further than they used to. We used to do very high level introduction. Why do you need this? What does it mean? And people are good. They, they're good on what it means and why they need it. Now they want to know how. And I'm very excited because this is the first year that we're really deep diving into structurally how steps you can take, um, forms you can fill out, not too many forms because we like to be simple, <laughs> but just ways to organize yourself and your company and your stakeholders to really embrace and implement this risk-based approach in your organization. So I am, I mean, if I, if I hadn't already, if I didn't already know everything that was in it, I'd be super excited to take it as a course because it's really given people that um, deeper understanding of what to do, not just why or or sort of the philosophical aspect around right. it. So that one's exciting. And then on a little bit lighter note, uh, on that Monday, we are having this decade retrospective. I'm getting some of the OG ESRM people onto a panel. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk to them about where it started. Uh, how it's impacted them and the security programs that they've run, how it's impacted their careers, but more importantly, how it's changed and where it's going. Because security doesn't ever stand still. ESRM hasn't stood still since we wrote the book. Uh, and that's only been about five years. So I'm I'm very excited to talk to uh, Dave Tyson and Brian Allen and Karen Frank, who have all been there uh, since the beginning before me, um, and uh, just get their thoughts on this exciting topic for security professionals across the board. I'm picturing the uh, this room full of original gangsters of ESRM. <laughs> it's going to be quite a quite an amazing event. And unfortunately, I can't make it this year. Uh, I have a clash and something, something else, but uh, I'll be definitely looking for the recording on that. For sure. With that in mind, I, I wonder if you can give us your thoughts on, on some of the key reasons 
that you, Rochelle, think that experts should register and attend? What are the? Uh, there's so much to look forward to at this particular event. I, I wonder, you know, what are some of the you know three to four sort of key things that you're looking forward to, and, and some of the reasons you think that people just register and attend and come along and not only see your event, but obviously see all other opportunities that are to engage with security professionals and peers and birds of a feather this year. Yeah, I'm, so notwithstanding the fact that I get to go there and I get to see all my security friends who I only get to see once a year, which is a big draw, but it's not really the professional draw. It's sort of the personal aspect of it. Um, when I'm planning my GSX experience, I plan it around a couple of different things. One, I go through, we have an amazing education lineup every year. It's always new and different. There's always something interesting. And it's so rare that you really get to hear security practitioners tell the security practitioner story. What I love about the education at GSX is that people who speak there are people who do this. Um, I, look, I do love a good, highly professional, academic, prepared, um, product-based presentation, uh, but really getting into case studies and understanding and, hey, let me tell you my story when we get into those kinds of education sessions, to me, it's gold because you're going to find something about that person's story that reflects your story and you're going to be able to get a little nugget of advice. So maybe you don't adopt their entire program, but you're like, oh, yeah, that thing. I'm going to try that. And so the education sessions are sort of the first thing that I schedule myself for. And then I fit in walking the floor because the floor is amazing. And I always find new products and meet new people. And I love that I get to talk to, um, typically at GSX, I'm not, I, I don't mean to say just salespeople, but I'm not talking to only the salespeople. They often have engineers in place. They have company owners there. Um, lots and lots of people come to GSX. So you can dive in to some pretty esoteric conversations and I have gone down a couple of rabbit holes and then I realized, <laughs> oh, this is probably not what you got this booth here for. But, hey, I had fun. Thank you for the conversation. So I think that the opportunity to engage um, both from the education on the floor, uh, then there's always exciting events. Um, so it's it's a full it's a full three days. I go home tired for sure and packed <laughs> full of information. I love it. And all enthused the next 12 months ahead before the next event. Uh, you know, one of the things that always strikes me about the GSX event itself, when you think about the, the actual name Global Security Exchange, I, I look at it from a lot of the, the key things that are on offer and, and, and particularly why this event versus others. You know, there's InfoSec Europe that's held in London every year. There's RSA uh, usually in San Francisco. Is it fair to say, in your view, that this particular event, GSX from ASS, ASIS, uh, it's a tongue twister, international, um, it is a unique event in that it brings the physical security uh, professionals and experts together. It brings sort of people who think about cybersecurity and virtual security at the other end of the spectrum. And in the middle is that whole logical challenge of, you know, systems and software and platforms and tools and devices. Is that a fair thing to say? This is a, a fairly unique event for that very thing. As you said, you bring all these experts together who are practitioners, birds of a feather, but also when you put together the keynotes and the panels and the demos and the training and certification and the networking, the, these multiple pillars all together is, is unique as far as I've seen. I haven't seen an event like it anywhere else in the world. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Um, GSX, for all of those reasons, is is quite unique. It's It's a place where you can talk almost about anything. I meet people there who are responsible for cyber, but they need to be there and check stuff out because, hey, guess what? All of these physical security products are on the network now. So if you're into being responsible for physical security, you're kind of also responsible for the cybersecurity of your physical security. And if you're in cybersecurity, you have to understand all of these physical security things that are coming onto your network. And the more that we mesh um, identity management across these things, the more that we mesh a process procedure uh, and then we let's layer in business continuity and emergency response <laughs> and whether you're responding to a cyber uh, incident or um, a physical incident i mean that to me is the excitement of it um, then wrapping in the fact that asis does boost uh, esrm as a concept and esrm is really that place and that's why i love it it's it's the thing that brings it all together because it's all risk it's all types of security risk and you have to manage them. And it doesn't really matter how 
you're managing it, you find a risk. And sometimes the solution is a cyber and sometimes the solution is physical. Sometimes it's uh, a human and sometimes it's a camera. All of that yeah, yeah. can be talked about at GSX and, and more. Um, so to me, I think that that's the unique model of it. And it's also because it's it's a very security centric audience. It's also got an intimacy that I like. Um, you do really feel like you're connecting um, at this event too. So for all of those reasons, I think it's a pretty unique offering uh, in the space. Exciting. Well, that alone is, is the sales pitch from my mind for people to to register and, and, and attend and come along and, and be part of all of that. I wonder if we could wrap up with with your take, a little bit of a crystal ball gazing in many ways, but you know, talking before we were recording, you gave me some great insights in some of these, and I'd love to share it with our audience. Um, in the next 12 to 18 months, you know, we've had three three and a half years roughly now, sort of the, you know, the pandemic situation. Security more than anywhere was was challenged with you know human beings working from home and all the aspects around that, their physical safety and security, infrastructure security with the lockdowns and so forth. You had devices working from places outside of firewalls. As you said, you've got physical things and security, you've got the logical systems and running it, you've got the data, you've got cybersecurity around that. Now, you know, post-pandemic, we've, we've, we're coming back to some of the traditional security challenges of physical, logical, and virtual and so forth, but they're compounded by supply chain challenges and they're compounded by geopolitical issues and a whole range of other things that are just, you know, where any one of these things is exhausting, put them all together and they're, they're, they're almost, you know, they feel insurmountable. What do you think from board level in particular, because I know when you talk about enterprise security and you were just talking about, you know, the, the focus on risk and you, you know, often in my experience, certainly with my companies, we look at the risks that exist and the type of impact that's there and some of the response that we might be able to bring about to that prior or, or during or after the incidents and then the mitigation and reporting afterwards. Across the spectrum, what, what are the, some of the things that you're talking about at board level and, and, and some of the C-suites and the practitioners that they should be thinking about for the next 12 to 18 months, just to be aware of, get them on their boardroom agendas, be talking about them, create a language and vocab so that if and when that does happen to them, that they are prepared. Because I know there's so many things where, in my experience, you know, hospitals and aged care facilities are, are being attacked by cybersecurity. And then we've got physical car parks that with people breaking in to steal coins things that we just hadn't really anticipated that are happening now. What are some of the things that you think, we, just to wrap us up, that people should be thinking about? And not so much just in the context of GSX, but certainly things that they'll be able to discuss with you and your peers there, that the next 12 to 18 months, they should be thinking about, talking about preparing for. Sure. Um, it's really interesting because at the beginning of 2023, uh, the World Economic Forum, those are the Davos people, um, put out a report. And they were talking about the, the kinds of, risk that CEOs are looking at and thinking about. And it's um, global political instability. It's impacts from climate change. It's the cost of living crisis that's been going on. What's fascinating to me is we're starting to hear the, the board level security folks, the CSOs, the CISOs, talk about those same business impacting things. So if we just look at it from a security perspective, I'll pick one, cost of living uh, crisis. Oh, that is driving um, huge theft trends. A lot of these um, retail uh, sort of heist type activities where they swamp the store and run off with it. These are things that are definitely related uh, to some of that pandemic driven cost of living crisis, the inflation crisis that we're going through. So these things that seem like, oh, that's that's just an economic problem. What, do I, what does that have to do with how I'm securing my business? It's not my threat, but it's a threat to the business. And what we're really seeing is that executives in the security space, because they're taking this risk-based approach and because they are now having to present their reasons uh, to the board, they have to talk to the board about what they're doing to protect the business holistically. We're really starting to hear about unrest uh, and it's all knock on effects. You can't, you can't, right. control, it's not your fault that there's unrest, but you have to do something to be able to respond to. You have to protect your people. You have to protect your supply chain, uh, which is a serious problem in a lot of places. And so these conversations are really getting elevated. Add to that the good old fraud internal um, threats that people face um, quite significantly also partially driven by the cost of living crisis because we were having these 
people in economic dire straits who are more willing to perhaps engage in some internal activity that they might not have before. So those to me, I think are the most significant new trends. Uh, you never get to forget about theft. You never forget <laughs> about all of the things that we have to protect. It's just, we're adding more, more to the pile now of, of the C-suite. And so that I think is where the conversation's going over the next uh, 12 to 18 months, couple of years. And it's, it's not gonna change anytime soon. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to bet there's going to be some interesting conversations and sessions at GSX on some of those topics. Oh, I have no doubt. One final question, if I can, uh, listen to you talk about that. It, it reminds me that a lot of discussion I'm, I'm uh, part of currently, not just in board level, but across the C-suite is around this topic where people who wouldn't normally be required to think about security in various forms or even understand it, have a language and vocab, even chief risk officers who predominantly used to be economically focused are now having to start to think about these things and CISOs and CSOs. And we now have a chief AI officer who's having to think about security as well. Are you seeing more of a, a, a meeting the minds of this? And, I, and I'm thinking of it from the point of view that I think Chief risk officers and chief AI officers are probably great candidates to register and come to GSX 2023 for that very reason. They are being presented this challenge now and they may or may not be prepared for that. Is there a, a bit of a cross-pollination, do you think, in some of these other roles where security is now part of their remit, even though it may not historically be, but as you said, 12 to 18 months and going onwards, it is going to be whether they like it or not? I think it is, um, especially you mentioned the, the chief risk officer and the AI, the, the AI folks as well, because people are going to be using AI more and more um, in cyber mm. um, and possibly physical. I don't, uh, you know, AI, AI is going to be doing some interesting things. Um, so I would say that one of the largest uh, unknown threats of AI is how it's going to impact security. Uh, but from a risk perspective, uh, yes, the mitigation of business risks that used to be financial or operational and you used to have to worry about, um, you know, the, the actual logistics of shipping your supply chain. Now that risk officer needs to pay attention to the security of the supply chain. Um, is it both safe and stable and the manufacturing can get done. So your just in time manufacturing is not going to fall down, but also is it going through a path that might be open to piracy? Right. Um, if it's yeah. going to be um, taken uh, in the middle of its transit, if it's going to be counterfeited halfway through and sold uh, on the black market. So these are things that brand risk issues, um, product risk issues are huge and to me, I think that if you are somebody at the top of a risk organization, coming to a, an or an event like GSX, learning more about the ways your security team in your organization is mitigating, is looking at them, understanding that these are very smart business people who are there to help you, I think it would be a great opening for some of those folks who may not have thought about security before. Perfect. That's that. There is the pitch line, um, Rochelle. Thank you so much for your time. It's been such a pleasure to chat with you. I, I really, you. really enjoyed the insights you shared, and uh, I think you've summarized perfectly that you know it isn't just the traditional pillars of physical, logical, virtual, etc. Security that should come to this. It is a lot of these other roles that are impacted. And for our audience, we, we will have links and details wherever you see this video to the event website itself and and linking to some of the blogs and articles that uh, Rachelle and, and Piers have been putting together and other interviews and conversations we'll have following from this. And we, we do highly recommend that people who may not normally think they need to go to an event like this to consider security challenges and, and build that language, build a vocab, network, get the experience, do the training, see the demos. This is an event this year more than ever that we think you should come along. And as you've said, Rochelle, there are so many great reasons to go that that's almost far outweighing the reasons not to go. Thanks so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm sorry I won't get to see you in person this year, but I hopefully I'll be able to join next year and see you then. Absolutely. Thank you for your time today. Indeed. Well, have a great day. Stay safe and have a fantastic uh, event this year. Thanks. Cheers.